Hi, I'm Beth Carpenter and I'm a health and wellness coach here in Austin, Texas. And what I'm actually going to be um, doing right now is making some um, raw dog food for my dogs. And the first part I'm actually going to be uh, working on is the vegetable portion. It's a combination of meat and vegetables. And um, so what I'm actually preparing today is going to be the combination of sweet potato, apple, zucchini, and celery. Um, celery and apple are probably the two things I consistently put in each time that I make their dog food for them. This, this whole journey in <laughs> getting around to making dog food as opposed to just purchasing it really began because I have large dogs and so the the cost of buying really good raw um, dog food really was extremely high and I thought well there's got to be a way to make it just a little bit cheaper and so that's what began this journey of doing it now the interesting thing is is even though I eat primarily raw myself, um, I wasn't feeding my dogs raw because I knew the cost of feeding them raw and I basically was, you know, saving some money. And um, my older dog who, um, I think Rusty is like probably 10 and a half, 11 right in there. He had, since he was a puppy, had some hip dysplasia. And so he would have some, some pain. And even though I had him on a really good um, dry dog food that had no grain or anything in it, um, and I gave him some natural supplements that would reduce any sort of uh, problems with the hip dysplasia, that worked well for a while, but um, he started um, gaining weight and I wasn't overfeeding him. And he was starting to get some fatty tumors and stuff. And then the hip dysplasia got so bad that all I could do was resort to medication, a prescription medication from the vet because he was even crying um, in pain when he was just simply lying down. And so I went, oh my God. And so then it actually got worse still. And a probably, I think it's probably been a year now, I thought I was actually gonna lose him. And I thought, well, he, you know, really, he's too, too young, even though he's 60 pounds, he's still too young, you know, to make a transition and, and to be so painful. And so let me just see what happens you know, if I convert him to raw, and he actually at this point wasn't even eating. And so um, for three days he wouldn't eat. And so um, after that third day, I put some raw food in, in front of him. And that I had actually purchased. And um, he ate it and uh, enjoyed it. And the interesting thing that actually did occur is here was this dog that was slightly overweight and uh, but had never really overeaten whatsoever. Not only was he losing weight, but his pain was going away and the um, fatty tumor um, that he had was disappearing. And so I was really ecstatic about it. So I had him on raw, but I still had my other dog uh, eating the other way at that time. Now they're both actually raw now. I actually do give her a little bit of dry food. Um, she won't chew on bones, but I, her teeth seem to need a little bit of crunchiness. So I give her a little bit. And um, What's happened too, as far as their um, temperaments go, even though they're both really sweet dogs, there seems to be 
just more of an ease in their living, uh, a peacefulness as well. So I'm really pleased with that. And so after buying raw dog food for a while, I went, oh, gads, okay. Let's see what we can do to reduce the um, expenses. And so that's how this journey began. So what I have here is a food processor. And I'm just putting the vegetables in here. I'm actually going to grind this down a little bit before I add the, the sweet potato because as you can tell, it's pretty full. We're going to start there first because there's a couple different parts to this. But if you take the time to do this, it, you know, it should just be once or twice a month that you spend time making dog food. And um, so if you just turn this on it, it's not going to work very well you really need to pulse it so it creates a chopping action and as you can see it is starting to chop but you have to continue to pulse it until it pulls what's on top all the way down so we'll just keep going there, now we're starting to get it chopped better. And, and it is turning into a mush. <laughs> Which is pretty good. Let me go ahead and give it a, a little bit of a stir. Make sure there's no big chunks left in here. It's okay if there's, you know, some pieces, but no big chunks. Um, Rusty will eat just about anything, but if I was to <laughs> leave any big chunks, and especially if it's like green, um, and here my dog Hula will actually pick it out and set it next to her dish. So I, I do have to get, um, things, um, pulverized a bit more because of her. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take out a portion of that and put it over here because I, I prepare the vegetables and when, after I get the vegetables done, that's where I began to add some, uh, nutritional, um, supplement type things to it to add more nutrition to it and then once that's mixed really well that's actually when I add in the meat and I have different variations on what I um, mix for vegetables and like I told you for today I've got zucchini apple celery and sweet potato so let me just go ahead and scoop out some of this you gotta make room for this sweet potato in here. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get this sweet potato in here. Now from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut up the sweet potato in here. And I actually do um, buy organic vegetables. And um, once in a blue moon, I may not be able to find what I want, but that's so rare, uh, at least in this part of the country. Here in Austin, it's just so easy to find whatever it is that you may need um, that's locally grown and organic. And so we're fortunate to have that uh, available to us here. The, the one thing about um, making dog food, which you'll also see here in a minute, is it really does help to keep you more fit and keep your heart um, stronger, too. And in some of the most more indigenous areas, it's actually um, interesting because, you know, the, the women or the men or whoever is doing uh, the cooking, if they're in the kitchen and you know grinding things and cutting things or using this upper body they're um, not only helping the lymph to move but they're also helping the heart as well all right where is my lid here we go okay now we're going to go ahead let me, let me go ahead and stir this just a wee bit to help it 
Okay. And we're going to go back to pulsing, just like what we did before. All right, let's see if this is uh, in good shape here or not. Make sure there's no really big chunks. Yeah, it doesn't look like there is. Maybe a couple pieces that are bigger. Once again, Rusty doesn't care, but Hula sure does. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do a little bit more pulsing. All righty. We've got this part done here. I'm going to also scoot this stuff out of the way here. All righty. So now we're going to go ahead and get out all these vegetables. And as you can see, the first part was green and now this is orange, you know. But we're going to mix all this together. And I actually normally make more dog food than what I'll actually be doing tonight. And um, I go down to uh, Sprouts, usually when their meat is on sale. Because um, I like to, to buy it on sale. Um, their natural meat. And um, dog food was needed. And it wasn't on sale, so I didn't get quite as much as I normally do. But we'll get to the meat portion here in just a minute. So it's at this point, we're going to do a series of, you know, mixing. Get the vegetables good and mix. Because each stage, if you're mixing stuff really well, it makes it just easier. All right. All right, now we've got the vegetables really mixed. And now I'm going to be adding the different supplements or nutrients to the food. Some of it will actually be seasoning too. And um, that way um, it's not just vegetables and meat, but there's also uh, nutrition from supplements. Because they do that actually in the raw food that you buy, just like... If you're buying dog food, you can buy um, like doggy vitamins and give them to them. Well, this way you don't have to buy all those extra things because you're going to have it all in one place. All right. So, um, hmm, I'm a little bit low on the parsley, but I have some extra. I like adding parsley. And, um, Parsley's real interesting. A lot of people consider it to help with freshening breath. As you can see, I've got lots of parsley here. Because I buy organic. Um, I have a um, site that's linked on, on my website. Um, I think I better do it this way so I don't spill too much. That uh, where I can get organic herbs and stuff. Parsley, a lot of people use just simply you know, as a garnish or breath freshener. But parsley actually helps against cancers as well, like uh, uh, any sort of malignancy in the body. So uh, by having that, that also allows for some super green. My counters are clean, so I'm actually going to just toss that in there. And let's go ahead and, and add a spoonful. And um, so we've got the parsley in. Um, sometimes I use a poultry seasoning. I'm not going to use a poultry seasoning today. I'm going to actually use um, a vegetable broth uh, that is all natural just to add uh, more flavor and more seasoning. I, I can give you more measurements um, later. Um, okay. And I actually do add salt to it. 
If you're using a natural salt, it actually has a lot of minerals in it, and I'm specifically using celery salt for the uh, additional um, minerals in it as well. Always use natural. Don't by any means use like Morton. So that was probably like a, a teaspoon there is salt, which is no, no, no big deal. So next we're going to add in here, this is some um, organic garlic granules. Uh, once again, one of the nutritional supplements that people actually buy for their dogs is garlic with bruge yeast and their little chewy things. And dogs act absolutely, absolutely love them. Sometimes it makes them a little bit tooty, but mm, it happens. So the, the next three things that I'm going to add here is vitamin C, a whole food source of vitamin C. Um, bone meal. And if the meat that I had purchased had been meat that had bone in it where I could get the whole thing ground, um, I wouldn't be buying the bone meal. Uh, but because that's not the case, <laughs> um, I'm adding some bone meal in there. And I've been able to, for years, to prepare food and cook without measuring. So for me, this is no big deal. I know what to do here. This other, this is a container that I've just filled over and over and over, but it is um, a nutritional yeast, so it's also going to give lots of flavor, and it'll help supply a lot of B vitamins to them as well. There are other things that are good to add to their food, but when they've been in it and frozen and thawed for a while, it doesn't necessarily have the best taste. And that would be MSM and certain super greens. So if I'm using some sort of super greens, I would just sprinkle it on top of their food along with the MSM. Um, so as you see, I'm mixing it up because it needs to be blended well before we add the meat. Okay, now that that's blended, I'll go ahead and get the meat in there, but let me go ahead and clear the counter space a little bit. Okay, now that I've cleared the counter space, I'm going to move the bowl right here. And, um, I'm going to get the meat out, and the meat I have is an 85% lean natural beef and ground chicken today. Um, sometimes I use the beef and turkey uh, occasionally. Um, for instance, like around Thanksgiving, you can get um, fresh turkey that hasn't been frozen and if the, the butcher will grind the whole thing for you, then I'll do it with just like the turkey and then I'll have some other variations in it as well. I gotta find the meat now. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Great, I'm back. I found the meat. It was in the other refrigerator. make sure this didn't leak out at all. Nope. Okay. Good. If it does, I'll, you know, wash the, the uh, bags. And I personally don't like to necessarily have the meat on my hands. And so I have gloves specifically for mixing the meat. I know a lot of people say, well, just use a spoon and 
yeah, that's, that's okay to do. Now that I've gotten the meat, and like I said, I have these special gloves that um, I use for, for mixing the meat. And even though they were uh, sterilized after each use, I go ahead and wash them again. Uh, because I'm going to be mixing, I'm going to be kneading the meat and the vegetables together. And um, this is one of the reasons it helps with this whole chest, heart, lymphatic, and breast area because of, of doing this. So we're going to go ahead and start with um, getting the ground chicken in there. And whenever I get the package open, sometimes they can be particular. I can hear them out there barking. They are hungry. They're saying, it is way past dinner time. Let us in. Now, just because I feed them raw doesn't necessarily mean that dogs are going to live a longer life. They could or they couldn't. And um, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and start mixing some of it now before I get the, the meat in, um, I mean the beef in. This is probably about um, two, I think this was about two and a half pounds of ground chicken. And I have over here four and a half pounds of um, ground meat. And um, just to keep the mess down, I'm going to slide my fingers out of here. But what it does do, even though it's not like, oh, you're going to extend the life of your animal by several years or anything, it allows for their life to be better. Their, their joints work better. They don't have tumors. They don't continue to decline in such a horrible way that you see. And... Um, Parts neat, you know, seeing the life in them, knowing that they're they're happy and their body feels good. That's what makes all the difference in the world. And maybe if you do it for them, you'll do it for you. Not that you know you want to eat this, unless you're a carnivore. It'd probably be really, really good. I actually tell my husband if he's wanting meat, he can pull out some of the dog food and just make a patty and, and cook it. He hasn't done it yet, so. All right, so here we go. We have got, I'm going to just set this spoon here. Come on, down. As you can see, there's a lot of meat. And really working my fingers and my wrists and my arms. This is helping my biceps and my triceps and my heart. And know that as you're making this, to think happy thoughts. If you're going, oh gross, this is disgusting, then you're putting that energy into your dog's food and you don't want to do that. Just like when you're cooking in the kitchen for somebody, whether you're preparing raw or cooking, it doesn't really matter. It's about the energy that you put in it. It's one of the interesting things that I think about that um, reality show with that chef. I only watched a part of it. Like, 
two shows one time, but all that yelling and all that anger around food, that, that doesn't lend towards good digestion, <laughs> nor the body absorbing the nutrients that just passes angry energy onto whoever's eating that food. The stress that's in those kitchens are just like crazy. I'm hoping they'll change that. So as you can see with the combination of the meat and the vegetables, you're actually getting quite a bit here. And as you're moving your hands through, you can see where they're maybe chunks of the meat that still needs to be broken up and mixed in with the vegetables. And then once it's really, really well blended, then I actually spoon it into baggies. And the cool thing about doing that is I always make sure the baggies have, oh, four and a half to five ounces in there. And that way, for, for my beasties, that works along with the second part of the, the raw food, which I'll show you here in just a minute. All right, I think, I think we're getting close to having this fully blended. This also makes it really easy for when the house sitter comes, you know, you just pull out in the morning a couple packages and set it like in a bowl in the fridge and let it defrost through the day. All right, I think, I think, I think, I think this is gonna be good enough. We're gonna see. Okay, as you can see, <laughs> this is why I want to wear gloves. <laughs> uh, I can put the purple energy in their food. All right. They are going to be happy campers. And um, I'll at least do the immediate rinse off of these. I'll clean them up a bit more here when I'm all said and done. Well, let's at least get a layer of grime off. Yeah, most people just sit around and watch TV and complain about how they want things to be different, but, but they don't really do anything to make different real. So this is about making it real. Okay. And just set these aside here for the moment. And I actually do wash my hands too. Just even though the gloves are still pretty sealed, there's no holes or anything in it. I just like to go ahead and get that done. And I'm going to go ahead and get some of this just wiped up, just to get some of this up. Okay, I'll wash the towels here in a minute. Now this next part here is beginning to put this in the plastic bags and I actually do have a scale so I can weigh so if some are light or some are too heavy then I can adjust it. I don't care really if it's 4.5 ounces or 5 ounces, um, just somewhere between that 4.5, 5 ounces seems to be good because most of the time people overfeed their pets just like they overfeed themselves. So what I've done is I've opened up a bunch of um, plastic baggies and I'll spoon in some of the dog food and um, it's, it, it's pretty easy. I mean, it, it's, it's basically just, you know, a spoonful here. And I'll actually grab the, the scales. I should have brought them over and I just didn't. But I'll show you, it's real easy. All 
All right, the scales do have to be on a flat surface, so um, I'll just scoot this up. I'll turn this on. So it's gone to zero here, and I just place it on there, 4.5, one spoonful. <laughs> so there you have, and that is what I add. Like I told you, there's a second part that I add, and that is to add more substance and more protein to their food still, is I actually sprout lentils that would be technically considered raw, and once they've been sprouted, I actually steam them for like five minutes, toss them with some um, olive oil, is, uh, let me grab them. I had just, uh, a couple days ago, sprouted some lentils, so you can take a look at them here. And what I do is I add a cup of lentils to the packet of four and a half to five ounces of meat. And sprouting lentils is really, really easy. I take two cups of dried lentils, and, and they are organic, and I cover them with good filtered water in, in a big bowl, and then I actually cover it with a really thin linen um, dish towel. And then I stick it on top of the refrigerator because that little vibration and warmth is really good for sprouting them, and what you do is you soak them overnight, and then you drain them the next day and you just rinse them twice a day for a couple days. And all these little tails that you saw in here, those are the sprouts. So it's like activated. So there's a lot more nutrition because of the sprouting. And then I just steam them in a steamer, like I said, and I toss them. If I want to add some seasoning, I can. And that way I put a cup in their bowl along with a spoonful of the meat and they are very, very happy. So if you want to add on top of that some MSM, which is really good for their joints,
and he's healthier and happier too and Hula actually is doing a lot better too so thank you and we're gonna get this put together so we can put it up and you have a beautiful evening bye-bye <laughs>